Today on chat room, we're going to test Michael's intelligence using a website called Brainfall. All right, welcome back to chat room. I'm with my co-host. Hey there, a hey, very nervous Michael. <laughs> so today he's going to answer ten questions, and um, this this test on Brainfall is basically to see if you're smart or not. Not really sure if this actually indicates if people are smart or not, but I mean, we're going to see how Michael does. Uh, you ready, Michael? Yeah, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. All righty, let's see if you're smart. Okay, question number one. What is a four-digit number where the first number is one-half the last number, the second number is double the first number, and the third number is one-fourth of the other three numbers combined? Answer A is 2,474. The second answer is 4,858. The third number is 1,212, and the fourth number is is 3,979. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, I think the tricky thing is, so just starting off, the first number is one half the last number. So that is literally everyone except for the last one, because right. three is not half of nine, so I can discount that one. But one is half of two, and 12, 12 and the others... Uh, so the real trick is probably figuring out the third number. It's one fourth of the other numbers combined, and so two thousand four hundred seventy-four. Two plus four plus four is ten. That's seven. It's not one third. Eight plus eight plus four is twenty. Uh, that's five. So I'm already already thinking it's probably that one. Uh, but one plus two plus two, yeah. So I'm gonna go with four thousand eight hundred fifty-eight. Alrighty. I, I got I got it turned green. I don't oh I guess it's not gonna tell me if I got it right. But no. I'm feeling optimistic. Okay, so the second question says solve by figuring out which sequence belongs next in the following sequence. H T F H F F T F is to six two eight six eight eight two eight as F T T H T H H T is to what? Well, that's that's not annoying at all. Um, <laughs> the good thing is, if you had dyslexic, that would, this would be terrible. Yeah, for real. I think this is a simple. I, I love codes, so I think this is what they call a substitution cipher. So right. the H is the six, the T is the two, and the F is the eight. So F T T. So that's probably eight two two, and. Yeah, it looks like there's only the one, so I'm going to go 8226282, which is the third one again. It turned green. Still don't know what that means. <laughs> I think I think it's I think it's meaning good things. I've had the same answers as you so far. Okay. All righty. Third question. Chandler is taller than Ross, and Joey is shorter than Chandler. Which of the following statements is most accurate? Answer A is it's impossible to tell whether, whether Ross or Joey is taller. Question B or answer B says Ross is taller than Joey. Answer C, Ross and Joey are the same height. Answer D, Joey is taller than Ross. Okay, I think the answer would be that it's impossible because even though Chandler is taller than Ross, let's say Chandler is six foot tall, Ross is five foot ten, Joey could still be five foot eleven which would then put him above Ross. So I'm going to go with it's impossible to tell. All right. But really, so answer... the question should be, which is your favorite friend? <laughs> yeah. All right. Answer A, another green. I'd be on some, Michael. All right. Question number four. If a plane leaves Italy traveling northwest at 600 miles per hour and crashes in the city, somewhere in the heart of France, after two hours of flying, where do they bury the survivors? Answer A says, return them home to Italy. Answer B says, nowhere. Answer C says, they would be buried in Lyon, France. Answer D, they would be buried in Paris, France. Okay, so the only reason I immediately have a suspicion about this is this is a riddle I used to yeah. love 
when I was younger. And specifically, they used to tell this, like, it'd be like on the border of France and Germany. And the whole thought is like, oh, I don't know who has the rights, but where do they bury the survivors? They're survivors. So you don't bury them. So in a way, like return them home to Italy, though. Right. Seems like a weird answer because technically you would return them. But I guess that they're taking this as literal as possible. So I'm going to go with nowhere and hope that they're not getting picky about that. All righty. Answer B, nowhere. Another green light. Mm. All right. Question number five. Sheldon bought four apples and three bananas for $1.45 on Monday. The next day, he returned to the same market and bought three apples, four bananas for $1.35. How much did the apples cost? Oh, man. Okay, this is already the most annoying question. And also, we haven't even taken into account inflation. Who's to say those apples and bananas still cost the same in this economy? Right. Uh, (laughs) Seriously, though. Okay. So four apples, three bananas. Uh, oh, that's annoying too, because like you can just do any kind of setup. This is why these are good that these are a multiple choice, because I need to work backwards. <laughs> so let's say how much do the apples cost? So if the apples cost thirty cents four, that's one twenty. Uh, three bananas that would be. I'm going to guess that's not it because they're not going to make me do that kind of math. So let's say four bananas is 25. That makes more sense. Three bananas would be 15 cents each. Three apples. So that'd be 75. And then 15 is 60. 75, 60. That's 135. Okay. So I think I got lucky by choosing 25 cents each is my second one to figure out but i'm gonna go with 25 cents each all right another green light answer d all righty question number six if an accountant tells a courtroom the attorney is my brother under oath but the attorney then testifies that he does not have a brother who is lying oof answer a the attorney <laughs> answer b the accountant answer c neither one answer d both are lit lying hmm Okay, so I, I want to start out already by just saying that I told John before this that I had three cups of coffee and that I thought I'd be jittery from that. But really, it's the pressure of having to start off with all these right. all these questions. So, uh, yeah, they're definitely getting harder as they go in. So if an accountant tells a courtroom, the attorney is my brother. Okay, so an accountant, the attorney is my brother. The attorney then testifies that he does not have a brother. Oh my god. This is maybe the first one that's just like outright stumping me. <laughs> I'm I was debating it. Uh but the problem is I don't think you'd have it's... a way to know. Yeah, it could be neither one. Yeah. Let's see if an accountant tells a courtroom. The problem is technically like there's two attorneys, right? I mean It says the accountant tells the courtroom tells the courtroom that the attorney is my brother under oath, but the attorney testifies that he it's not happening. Oh, oh! You know what? I think it's neither one because the accountant I think is going to be his sister. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So I, I'm going to say that this is some, yeah, gender play going on. So I'm going to go with neither one. All right, and the green light. Question seven. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> At the Daytona 500, Kevin Harvick wasn't first or last. Denny Hamlin beat Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick beat Brad Kliski. Joey uh, Logano wasn't first or last. Joey Logano beat Ryan Blaney. Brad Koloski beat Joey Logano. Who came in last? That is tricky. I, I barely could even read that. <laughs> but answer A yeah. is, it's a good thing Michael has these questions in front of everybody. Um, yeah, originally <laughs> I thought I would be like, oh, I can do this without the the four possible answers. Nope. <laughs> I would have okay, stumped so- on one. So answer A is Ryan Blaney, and then B, answer B is Joey Logano, and then answer C is Denny Hamlin, and then answer D is Brad Kaliski. Okay, let's see. So Kevin wasn't first or last. Denny's ahead of Kevin for sure. Kevin's ahead of Brad. Brad's ahead of Joey. Joey's not last, and Joey beat Ryan Blaney. So I think it's going to be Ryan Blaney, partly because he's like the only one whose name barely got came up very often so it's kind of like one of those subtle things like in a murder mystery series 
I'm right. try to sneak it onto you. All right, another green light. And so oh, man. All right, so question number eight. Jessica likes watermelon, but not apples. Like spaghetti. Girl. <laughs> yeah. Like spaghetti, but not burgers. Likes broccoli, but not carrots. Using this information, which of the following would she like? Answer A, pumpkins. Answer B, pork. Answer C, pears. Answer D, potatoes. What? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, so Jessica <laughs> likes watermelon, but not apples. Likes spaghetti, but not burgers. Likes broccoli, but not carrots. Using this information, which of the following would she not like? I that that one feels like none of that matters. <laughs> like the burgers is the only thing, or or spaghetti. You know, I'm like, okay, some of those have meat. Maybe that has a meat. I guess it depends on what she doesn't like about apples. Does she not like that they have seeds? Does she not like that burgers have buns? Well, one oh, thing, apples wait. and carrots, they kind of have a similar texture. Yeah. But they don't with burgers. So yeah. I'm very confused. Um, oh, and I thought it was some kind of like wordplay thing. So like she would like stuff with, uh, yeah, so, oh no, see, that doesn't make sense. Oh, because... crap. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, never mind. I was going to say there's kind of a trend there because it says watermelon but not apples, which starts with an A, and then like spaghetti, but but not burgers with a B and likes broccoli, but not carrots with a C. So it's like A, B, C is what she doesn't like. So I would think the next one would be D, but the options are not D. So that is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Well, and carrots. So carrots has two R's. Spaghetti has two T's. Apples has two P's, but she likes spaghetti and she doesn't like the others. Potatoes has two T's. Yeah. This is going to be the one I'm least confident on of any of them, but I guess... This, this could be the first time we see red if green has been positive. But just partly because I don't want to hold this up forever, but I'm going to go ahead and guess potatoes. Right. Though I will admit, this is the first one where I have no logic for that answer. I think I would have guessed pumpkins, but we'll see at the end. Okay. Oh, another green light. I don't know if it's just giving you screen lights for answering or what at this point. Um, yeah, I'll take anything to feel good about this right now. <laughs> right. All right. Answer or question number nine. Which of the following countries does not belong? Hint, the difference has nothing to do with the vowels, syllables, or continents. Okay. Answer A is Chile. Answer B is Denmark. Answer C is Australia. Answer D is Botswana. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, yeah. You're right there. Okay. I'm trying to think. This is one of these ones where I feel like one of these is actually like not a country. Like Denmark might be like a city or something like that. And the others are countries. Because otherwise, Chile's in the Southern Hemisphere. Botswana, I think, is in the Southern Hemisphere. Australia and Denmark would be in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh, no, no. Oh, you know what? Actually, it might be Denmark anyways, but because I think Denmark's the only one in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, I'm going to guess Denmark either way, because it's either not a country, which... I am not showing my geography <laughs> skills right now if I'm wrong on that. So apologies, chat room. But Or it's in the Northern Hemisphere, which I'm somewhat showing my geography skills. So I'm going with Denmark. All right. Answer B, Denmark. Oh, last question. <laughs> last question. What is the maximum number of times a single page of newspaper can be folded in half? Answer A is seven. Answer B is three. Answer C is one. Answer D is five. Last question. Okay. So I do know that if you take a piece of paper, it is a weird thing where you can genuinely only fold it so many times. But because that is something that I think I have to find out with a real piece of paper in my hands, I think this is more, again, like a word puzzle, like most of these have been. And I'm going with three. Uh, see, I, I'm going to guess one. One? Because I think, yeah, because I think technically if you're folding something in half, you're doing that once. Now you can fold it again in half, but I think that that's not what they mean. Yeah. So, again, I think they're just being super literal, which is kind of my wheelhouse because I'm way too literal, everybody tells me. Yeah. So uh, I'm hoping it's one. All right, we're going to go with one. I would have went with three chat room, but let's see who's smart. <laughs> Probably Michael. 
If I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't know. All right, here we go. Number one. Let's see what happens. Click here to get your results. All right, John. So I think those those green things were uh, what I what I was hoping for. It said I got 100%. Let's go. Yeah, here's what's hilarious, though. It says you are as smart as you thought, which I'm like, first of all, how uh, how much of an ego do you think I have? <laughs> Right, right. I was, I was, I was not as confident. That's another video with chat room guys. Uh, if you have uh, any tests that we should take or quiz each other, please drop in the comments. Give your opinion on this video if you want to see more videos like this. Like and subscribe, and we're out. All right. <laughs>